Good afternoon. This is week five of Social Work 541, and week five is on community practice, community practice skills. So let's go to the introduction for this week. The overview for this week reads as follows. Week five examines the skills necessary for effective community work associated with community organizing and interpersonal relations. The importance of leadership is also examined. The learning objectives for this week are to develop and apply micro practice social work skills necessary for community practice to describe the importance of cultural competence in work with communities to develop and apply group social work skills necessary for community practice and to examine the importance of leadership in community practice. The learning resources for this week are as follows. We will go over the slides in a few minutes. There are a number of chapters from the University of Kansas Community toolbox chapters 13 14 20 27 28 and 41. there are also a number of supplemental readings and two videos for this week one on social justice leaders and the other on homelessness in portland the tent city usa and you will need to look at both of these videos for assignments this week so the first discussion post is on what makes a good community leader. And first, watch at least one of the videos we just talked about and focus on the identified community organizer in those videos or the video you choose. Then complete your initial posts, including all of the following. Consider the community organizer identified in the video you watched and provide a list of no less than five characteristics of that community activist discussed in the film. For your list, don't just name the characteristics of the community activist. Provide specific examples and descriptions of each characteristic. When did you see them display this characteristic? How did you see them display this characteristic? Then describe in your own words why you think these particular skills are so important and if some skills that you didn't see used might have made the organizer more effective, what might they be? And please make sure to note which video you watched and respond to one of your classmates by Thursday with a follow-up post by Sunday. The next activity for the week is as follows, and this is on choosing a theoretical model for community intervention. This discussion form is meant to get you thinking about the theoretical model you and your dyad, triad, or small group will use to guide your intervention plan in your community needs and services plan. And this is due in week six. So make sure you understand that a theoretical framework must be included in that assignment in week six. For your initial post, you will draw on the course readings from week four on community practice models and changing community, communities, as well as the important characteristics of community practice models that you came up with in last week's discussion forum. Based on these resources, complete both of the following parts of your initial post. Identify and describe the theoretical model that you would like to use in an intervention plan for the community you are using in your community needs and services assessment assignments. This can be one of the theoretical models identified in the course readings for week four, or your own idea for a theoretical model built upon characteristics that you have identified. If you create your own theoretical model, remember that it must be related to community practice. 
With either type of theoretical model, you must provide citations to course resources. Describe your rationale for choosing this theoretical model. What are the strengths of using this model with your community and what are its limitations? And you can consult with your group members, but you are each doing your own writing. And again, this is due on Thursday with your follow-up post due on Sunday. Now let's go over the slides for this week on community practice skills. We've already gone over the overview and the objectives for, week, for this week. So let's talk about the goals of community work. And those are varied. The skills framework rests first and foremost in generalist practice skills. You are at various times likely to work on individual change, organizational change, community change, political and governmental change, and cultural change. Roles of the community organizer are as teacher, catalyst, facilitator, broker, advocate, researcher, counselor, and so very much more. So what kind of skills do you need? Community practice requires a number of skill domains to work with such a variety of roles. These skill domains cover areas such as interpersonal relationships, group skills, organizing, administration, supervision, planning and program development, organizational assessment activities, research and evaluation, and policy development. So the next few slides will examine a few selective critical components from these domains. Interpersonal skills. You can't be a good community organizer if you cannot relate well to clients at all levels. So of critical importance, the client in community practice is a community, but communities are made up of individuals. One key component is trust. The community worker is often not a part of the community, has a different educational and socioeconomic history, and may be racially, ethnically different. So in order to build trust and build relationships, you have to have good interpersonal skills, which include cultural sensitivity, knowing and acting in accordance with the world frame of the clients. We see the world through lenses, assumptions about how the world works. Norms, beliefs, and behaviors are strongly impacted by these lenses, and these lenses are created for us and with us by the groups of which we are a part. Trust is difficult to develop without taking the lenses of our clients seriously, seeing the world through their eyes. Thus, taking the time to learn and understand the lens is critical. Reading, observation, and even asking questions are useful ways to learn about clients. Respect. Treating clients as equals and partners. Nothing destroys relationships quicker than disrespect. But respect is also strongly affected by treating persons in accord with their cultural norms, or at least not belittling those cultural norms. A number of very simple steps can show respect, which is share, ask for permission, join in local ongoing community activities so you can learn about the community, contribute to but do not dominate the discussion, it's not about you, answer questions fairly and quickly, do not interrupt the person speaking, and give, accept, compliments, and credit for accomplishments. Honesty, being open and transparent. A lack of honesty is disrespectful and can create mistrust. One of the best ways to build honesty into a relationship is through open communication and transparency. Transparency means decisions are made in the light of day. Ideally, all decisions should be vetted with participants prior to action, but as it is unlikely that all decisions may be made prior to a decision, 
Try and set up rules in advance so that persons do not feel blindsided. Group skills. There are several critical skills that are important. One is the decision-making process. How a group makes decisions affects perceptions of trust, respect, and transparency. There are a number of different systems for making decisions, ranging from those which are very formal, like Robert's Rules of Order, parliamentary procedures, to very informal processes. All forms have their place, but two in particular should be considered. Consensus. Development of the sense of the group through discussion and negotiation is what is referred to as consensus. No decision is made without all participants agreeing. It can be slow, but when a decision is made, all are in accord, it is a bit difficult to use with larger groups. Democracy. The group votes on decisions. There may be winners and losers, but with large groups, this is sometimes inevitable. And even in consensus, people reach agreement, but it doesn't mean that people don't give up something in the process in order to reach that consensus. Leadership organization and group facilitation. In community work, you may serve as the leader facilitator of the groups. Leadership is one of the most studied domains in all of the social sciences. What makes a good leader? Good leaders motivate. This means knowing, learning what motivates persons to act. Some models suggest examining Maslow's hierarchy for guidance. The ability to coach. There are at least two elements here, the ability to educate about tasks and the ability to guide participants. The ability to manage conflict, the ability to problem solve, and the ability to read people to develop emotional competence. Some additional skills may be necessary, and that includes the organization seen as client, budgeting and financial management, working with boards of directors, resource development, program evaluation, organizational design, development assessment and diagnosis, computer information systems and technology, leadership and personnel management, networking, media and marketing, outreach program development, implementation and evaluation. Fundraising, including grant writing and event planning, coalition formulation and maintenance, plan change techniques, community organizing, task force membership, membership development and retention, economic development, legislative advocacy and lobbying skills, policy analysis and management, issue analysis techniques, social policy research and social action. And if you don't have the skills in all these areas, another skill is to know where to find someone who can assist in the tasks that you need to have done. And also, if you find that you yourself don't have a skill, this is an area where you can go and get information to build your own skill set. So with that, you have the readings for this week, you have the overview for this week, you have the videos that you need to watch and the assignments. And so I look forward to reading your assignments for the week. If you have any questions, please get to me as soon as possible. Have a wonderful week.